saw there was an all-wheel drive 500 plus horsepower Golf R. I was astonished at how fast that thing was. I thought that the Corvette was going to blow it out of the water, but apparently I was wrong. We were able to get a couple runs in. They were not great, I will be honest, and I don't think that the Corvette performed as well as it could have. Some of that was just because of conditions and the type of race that it was, but man, I thought that the Corvette was just going to walk the park with that R, and I was wrong. I got to admit, I'm shocked. A couple weeks ago, I filmed a video with a BMW M6. This was a beautiful M6, twin turbo, dual clutch transmission, very fast. And what I did to film this video is I traded my Z06 for a couple days with one of my friends who owns the car. We ended up swapping cars and it was gonna be just for the video, so maybe a couple hours, however long it took to film it, but we ended up trading for a couple days just to switch things up and drive different cars. But he gave me an interesting proposition. I wanna know how you guys feel about it. He offered to buy my car. The same thing that happened to me as soon as I drove this car, I was in love, that happened to him. Over the last year or so, I've kind of kicked around the idea of selling this car. I'm getting to a point in growing up where I kind of need money. The idea of buying a house is in the near future and that's expensive and I'm thinking about well, what I could sell, what I couldn't sell, and these cars have kind of gone up a lot in value since I've purchased it. I'd say confidently about 20 to 25% in value has increased in these cars. So let's talk about what these cars go for. This car behind me, at 45,000 miles is going for around 40 grand plus maybe a couple thousand considering the condition that it's in. But the truth is, they're really just very hard to find. You don't really see many C6 Z06s around and you definitely don't see a lot for sale, especially in this color. This is really the only Le Mans blue Corvette I've ever seen with the exception of one that was at a dealer. Should I take the money uh, realize some of that value that's increased in the car, maybe get something else, maybe do something different with the money. But before we dissect this offer, I wanna talk about how much I paid for this car. Out the door, tax, title, license, all that stuff, I paid for this car $31,500. The actual cost of the car was about 29,000, and then I added on maybe 2,000, 2,500 of just taxes, fees, all that stuff. So that's what I would consider my actual price of purchasing the car. So keep that in mind, I am in this car about $32,000 and let's just not include like insurance, all that stuff, all of that cost of ownership. I did do a big video on all of that stuff if you want to check that out right there, that's the video. So that goes over all of that cost of ownership stuff, but we're just going to talk about the purchase price of the car. That's going to be our base. Originally when I heard this offer, I just kind of brushed it off and then he started going higher and higher on his price that he would pay for it because I was like, oh, even if I made a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars on it, like, yeah, I like that, but I still couldn't buy another car for that that I liked as much or maybe I got as much value out of. And eventually he settled on his final offer. That was $42,000 plus the parts that I have for this car that are not installed. I have a couple parts laying around that I'm planning on doing the build to this car. We we're planning on doing the build. I have a lot of those purchased, so he wanted to include those in there and he was gonna throw those parts on there. We're gonna value those parts at about $3,000. So let's assume the $3,000 in parts plus the car for $42,000. That means we have about $35,000 into the car and we would be making about seven grand. Now, that is a lot, considering we just bought the Corolla for $700. This would really do a lot for me outside of YouTube, but I really don't think I want to sell it. The truth is, is that I love this car and it's a staple to the channel. You guys love it, I love it, and I really don't want to sell it. The accountant, the financially smart guy inside of me is like, hey, you should take the profit and you could buy a house. You could put this as a very nice down payment on a house. This would really kind of set me up because I'm in that part of my life where I'm looking for a house. I want to move on to bigger and better things and you obviously need money to do those. I could take the money, get rid of the parts. We still have the sand rail for something fun and I have the Corolla, which is dirt cheap. I don't have to spend any money on that. It would be a smart financial move on paper. Part of me says, hey, sell the Corvette now. You can buy something else. 
later on in life when you have more money and when it's more available to do so, when you're more set up and ready to do something. But to be honest, I really don't wanna sell this car. I don't know if that's a stupid decision. I don't know if I'll regret passing up this offer later, but in some weird, silly way, I feel like if I sell this car, I'm giving up on my dreams to be a YouTuber and to do all these things. I don't know if that really makes any sense or not, but I feel like I'm giving up on the dream, giving up on the build, giving up on really creating this car into something crazy and special. Even though I'm saying no to selling the car now, I'm pretty confident that these prices for this specific car, it's getting to the point where it's pretty unique and it's starting to become more rare. Yes, it's still a Corvette and there's still a lot of them out there. It's not like it's some one-off Lamborghini Countach that will only ever increase in value. It's not gonna increase in value like a Ford GT, but I'm still pretty confident that the prices will relatively stay the same. If I wanted to in 10,000 miles from now, I can drive it and sell it later on if I want to. Maybe this is just the emotional attachment to the car trying to justify it, but I'm still pretty confident that I'm in this car at a pretty good price and I don't think I'm gonna really lose money on it. It's still got pretty low miles on it and it's still really clean. God forbid, unless something bad happens like I totaled this car, I really can't see myself losing a ton and ton of money on it. Again, you know, knock on wood. Because yeah, anything can happen when you own a used car. The motor could blow up tomorrow. I could get in an accident. Something terrible like that could happen. But as far as the value of the car goes, I think it's gonna be pretty okay. So with that being said, we're still gonna go ahead with all the plans to build the car. We're still gonna do all of that. Maybe if we wanna sell it later, we will, but that's probably not gonna happen in the near future. Without giving away too much, I wanna give you guys some updates on how that build is going along. We're planning on doing this build in the winter, so it's still a little ways away, but I wanna do it while the car is already out of commission anyways, just so it's not out for, you know, a large amount of the summer. Right now, I am trying to find an exhaust company to partner with. I reached out to Corsa the other day to see if they would sponsor to help out with some of the uh, exhaust parts. They make some great stuff. So I'm kind of waiting on that. I have all of the parts that are engine related. However, I don't have some of the exhaust parts to back all that up and to support it. If you're not doing that type of stuff tastefully, you're just kind of choking up the motor. And I don't wanna do that. Like imagine supercharging or turboing your car while it's still being restricted very much by the stock exhaust. Does that make sense? I'm not turboing the car. Uh, not yet at least. That's kind of where I'm at. Like I still need to purchase some of those supporting mods and things like that so that when I throw everything on, it can go on smoothly. And a lot of this is still all like related on financial stuff. I only work like a regular normal nine to five job. I'm an accountant. So I'm already building the sand rail. Building two cars at once can be kind of expensive. So just slowly buying parts as soon as I have the cash available and ready to purchase. And unfortunately, I chose an expensive car to modify I was looking at axlebacks for this car. The Corsa Extreme is one of like the best ones out there and it costs like $2,200 for an axleback. Like, wow, that's more than I paid for my Corolla in the street. I don't know guys, do you think I'm making a mistake by not purchasing it? What would you do? I uh, kind of need some guidance in a situation like this. And you guys are actually pretty smart. Some of you are dumb. Well, about half of you, but the other half are pretty smart. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I'll see you in the next one.